Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, I'm a wildlife photographer based in Northern California now, as we've made the switch and the transition to the Bay Area from the Boston region. But today, we're not talking about my personal life, we're talking about the Nikon Z8 and the Z system, and how that compares to the Canon R5 and the Canon RF system. So with that, let's jump into it. So if you're a follower of this channel or of my photography, you'll know that until uh, about two years ago, I used the Nikon D850. The D850 was the pinnacle of DSLR development, the best DSLR camera that I could imagine ever owning and a joy to use. But I switched away from the D850 and Nikon because I wanted to move into the mirrorless system and with that move, it opened up a lot of opportunities, including animal eye autofocus and human eye autofocus, as well as much better subject tracking. And at the time, two years ago, Nikon was behind the curve. Canon and Sony had developed much better systems in terms of autofocus and had comparable image quality. And so it was sort of a no-brainer to go with the Canon R5 over, well, at that point, the Nikon Z seven because the z9 was not out yet well the z9 came around and i kind of wondered if i made the right decision but it was huge at three pounds and just not performing particularly well in those initial reviews and so i felt pretty good about being with canon but today with the z8 we see the z9 capabilities as they've matured with firmware 3.1 manifested in a smaller camera body that is comparable to the R5 and the Sony a7R5. And we see a very compelling wildlife package. And so it got me thinking, did I make the right decision switching over to Canon? And given that I'm at sort of a crossroads, having sold off my telephoto gear that I use for wildlife, should I consider maybe switching back to Nikon and the Z8? So a few weeks ago, I rented the Nikon Z9 and the Nikon 400mm f4.5 Z lens along with the 1.4x teleconverter. And I took it out in Santa Fe, New Mexico to shoot hummingbirds. And it was really fun. I had a blast doing it. The camera was really interesting to use, different from the Canon system, but I enjoyed learning how to use it, learning about hybrid autofocus, trying out wide area large and small and auto AF and the hybrid uh, approach to switching over from wide area large subject recognition to 3D tracking and basically familiarizing myself with the Nikon system. But I was very pleased today when the Nikon Z8 announcement came and we see that the Z8 is essentially exactly the same as the Z9 but in a smaller form factor. So all the lessons learned and the comparisons I made in my head between the uh, Z9 and the R5 are also applicable to the Z8 with the exception of size. So when comparing, say, the, the Z8, the new announced camera that isn't out yet in production, to the R5, the first thing we recognize is the price difference. Right now you can get a used R5 for about $2,500, say $25 to $2,800, whereas the Nikon Z8 is gonna set you back $4,000, and it's not available yet. So there is a, a considerable cost savings if you go with the Canon system in terms of the camera body. The R5 is also selling new for $3,100, about $1,000 less than the Nikon Z8. So I really wanted to see if I would have a substantial improvement in terms of the capabilities of the stacked sensor in the Z8 compared to the non-stacked sensor in the R5 to justify that extra thousand dollar expense for the newer camera. Now, when I'm evaluating cameras, I think about, for wildlife, I think about three main factors. The first two are really important. The first is image quality, and the second is autofocus capabilities, and perhaps the third, which is a little bit more distant, would be weight. Now, when it comes to the Canon R5 and the Z8, the weight and this form factor is essentially the same, so we can just cross out that third category. But I think it's worth thinking a little bit more about image quality and autofocus capabilities between these two cameras. 
So comparing the Z9 files that I got in terms of image quality to the R5, I found a couple different things that were interesting. The first is that I do think the Nikon image files coming out of camera, the RAW files, are a little bit sharper and a little bit easier to process than the Canon files. This wasn't a huge surprise to me for two reasons. The first thing is that the Nikon Z8, just like the D850 before it, and the Sony cameras, the R series cameras, the seven R series cameras, they do not include an anti-aliasing filter. Now the Canon R5 AA filter is a pretty moderate one. It doesn't have a very strong filter effect, but it does to eliminate moir, it does add a little bit of softness to the images. And yes, you can see that softness. And that's most comparable in the case of the Sony sensors when I put my Canon lenses on a Sony camera and I saw just how much more resolution the Sony sensor was getting out of the same lens as the Canon camera was. And I see the same thing present in the Nikon system. These files are sharp very sharp coming out of the Z9 and presumably the Z8 as well. And they are well color balanced and easy to edit. The other thing with image quality that we have to consider is rolling shutter. Now this has been talked about ad nauseum in, with everyone's review of everything. And yes, the Z8 stack sensor along with the Z9 is exceptionally fast. It's amazing to just use ES, electronic shutter, with no blackout at all, and to have no rolling shutter. Yes, that is a technological achievement. But realistically, the R5 is not that far behind. The sensor readout speed in the R5, while maybe three or four times slower than the Z8 and Z9, is quite fast. And I don't see rolling shutter in most applications when using electronic shutter on the R5. Both cameras are shooting 20 frames per second with electronic shutter, so you don't see much of a difference there either in terms of the drive speed for raw files. So really it comes down to, are you using the camera in such extreme circumstances where you need that stack shutter and you benefit from it? Now, if I were comparing, say, the Z8 to the, to the Canon R7, a much slower sensor and much cheaper camera, there is no question the Z8 would just knock the socks off of the R7 because there is such a severe rolling shutter on the R7. But when you compare the Nikon Z8 to the R5, you don't see much of a difference in terms of rolling shutter. It's improved on a stack sensor, but it's not the dramatic improvement that you might expect. Now the stack sensor does affect autofocus. So let's talk about autofocus, the next most important category to me, and really tied with image quality as the most important things to consider with a wildlife camera. When it comes to autofocus, I break this down into two subcategories. The first category is subject recognition or subject detection. How does the camera detect subjects that I wanna photograph using its processing, really its machine learning algorithms to analyze the image and detect subjects. The second category that matters to me is trackability. How well does the camera track subjects? Now, when it comes to subject detection, I gotta be honest with you, I was a little surprised when using the Z9. Given the reviews and what I had read, I expected the Z9 running firmware 3.1, which is the same firmware that the Z8 will receive, according to the initial reviews I've read, I was surprised that subject recognition was not at the same level as the Canon R5, which is a generation older. I think Canon has the best, along with Sony, you know, let's just call it a tie, but Canon and Sony really still do have better subject recognition than Nikon, even on the most recent system. Now, they're gonna be Nikon people who are gonna to object to this and say that it was my in, you know, my issues using the camera, and that's possibly true. But I will tell you that I had to resort to manual focus or single point focus much more often on the Z9 running firmware 3.1 than I do on the R5 to tell the camera where the subject was so that I could acquire the subject. The Canon R5 sees the scene and it finds the subjects much faster and with more reliability than the Nikon system does right now. Now, fortunately, firmware updates can move machine learning algorithms up, and it's quite possible that in the near future, Canon and Nikon and Sony will all just be so exceptional and good that we won't see much of a difference between them. But even comparing the Z9 to the R5, I thought the R5 had better subject recognition 
than the Z9 did. And I will assume that given the, R, the Z8 is the same thing as the Z9 in terms of the autofocus capabilities, we're likely to see the same comparison. Now the next thing with autofocus that I care about is trackability. How well does the camera track subjects that it has already acquired? Now assuming acquisition was equal between the two, I actually think here you do see the benefits of the stack sensor. So I was impressed with how the Z9 could track a subject once I had 3D tracking activated on the subject. I was very impressed how it would track the subject in and out of shrubs and leaves and things like that. You could see the benefit of that faster readout speed on the stack sensor compared to the R5. The tracking was better. The R5 is quite good for tracking, but it is starting to show its age. And I think cameras even like the R7 and the R6 Mark II perform better in the field. Of course, the R3 does as well in terms of tracking than the R5 does. Now, is it good enough to meet most applications? Yes, absolutely. But sure, I would love for the R5 to have updated tracking capabilities or for a new stack sensor version of the R5 to come out that would compete on this one issue. Look, when I think about these two things, image quality and autofocus capability between these two cameras, personally, I do not see a $1,000 difference in the performance of the two cameras. I think image quality is largely a wash. And I think in terms of subject acquisition and tracking, personally, for my type of photography, I actually prefer to be better at subject acquisition than tracking. And the reason why is because if you can't acquire the subject, you're gonna miss the opportunity to track the subject. Now, it's not like the Nikon Z8, Z9 are that bad at, at, track, at identifying a subject, but there were enough situations where I was frustrated and fighting the camera to try to find the subject that to me, that was almost a deal breaker. For more money, I would expect the same level of performance compared to the Canon R5, and it didn't. So look, when I compare those two cameras, I say, really what this does it's not that the Z8 is not good, it's a phenomenal camera, the Z9 is as well, but I think it shows you how much of a bargain the Canon R5 is right now. At $1,000 less than the Z8, it's 99% as good as the Z8, and in some cases, maybe it's even a little bit better in terms of like things like subject acquisition. So when you think about it that way, it doesn't really make sense to shift to a Z8 from an R5 because you're not gaining that much. Now, the final thing I think is important to mention is you should never, we should never consider a camera in isolation. We should always consider the entire system of lenses that would go with that camera and whether that meets our needs. And when it comes to Canon RF versus Z for wildlife, I can say unequivocally, unequivocally, that the Nikon system is better than the Canon system. The Z system has that 400 millimeter F 4.5, um, 2.5 pound super sharp lens that performs very well with the teleconverter and Canon has nothing to match it. Not to mention the fact that the Nikon system also has the 800 millimeter F 6.3 PF lens that's like expensive, but a pretty reasonable $6,000 for that type of focal length. And again, Canon has nothing in that mid-range price range to match it. And so when you consider the systems, it's, you know, Nikon looks really good. But look, for me personally, I don't see enough of a justification here to sell off the R5 and buy a more expensive Z8, particularly given the cycles of the cameras and where they are now. Yes, the Z8 is really good, and it's going to make a lot of people very happy, but it's kind of similar level, minus the, the ability to track action, compared to the um, R5, which is no slouch when it comes to action photography. And the next generation Canon cameras, which are going to come out in the next year or two, like the R5 Mark II, well, those are almost certainly going to exceed the specifications of the Z8. And they're probably gonna cost at parity with the Z8, so 4,000 or less, because they have to compete. So I don't personally think it makes sense to switch for this camera. I mean, if the autofocus were better on the Z8 system, if it matched Sony, for example, yeah, okay, maybe I would go that route, but it's not there yet. So I hope Nikon sorts out 
their algorithms. I think they're getting so good and they're getting much better and I think they're gonna get there. And once they get there, we're gonna have three systems, Nikon, Sony, and Canon, that are all operating at unbelievable levels in terms of the camera capabilities. And I think then it's a no-brainer to go with a system like the Z system that has cheaper and really well-performing lightweight wildlife glass compared to something like Canon. And I can only hope that since I'm sticking with Canon, Canon will wake up and start developing glass that is comparable to the Nikon Z system for those mid-range camera lenses. The ones, those of us out there who are spending three or $4,000 on a lens and not $15,000 on a lens. And I really hope Canon comes out with something similar to that 400 millimeter F 4.5 or something like that in the RF system, because I think that's going to make people very happy and Canon will be able to compete a little bit better with Nikon. So those are my thoughts on the Z8. I hope it's useful for you. It's been useful for me to think about this and validate my decision to stick with the Canon system. But I hope those who are switching to Nikon or those who are sticking with Nikon and getting the Z8 from the D850, for example, you guys are getting an amazing camera and you know all these camera systems are amazing at this point. So whether or not you know it's better in certain aspects or others is sort of a personal decision as to what you care about. But yeah, I mean, kudos to, to Nikon for, for catching up and to, for figuring out most of this stuff. And, you know, we're in an exciting era of photography where it's exciting because it puts even more pressure on us as photographers to deliver interesting photos. And when the gear is all so good, um, we can't really complain about our gear anymore. So let's get out there and take pictures and stop talking about gear and I'm gonna, you know, practice what I preach and, uh, and be happy with the Nikon, I mean the Canon system going forward. So be well and take care and don't forget to get outside. I'm Matt and I will catch you on the next one.